Welcome to the lecture series on advanced velocity design. I am covering portion on velocity testing and today we will cover design for test techniques. In last lecture we discussed about various difficulties in sequential test generation and we discussed that you need to unroll your circuit multiple time frames. Uh, <coughs> to generate a test sequence and these. So, now if you look at the source of these difficulties, these difficulties are arising due to poor initializability of the circuit. So, that means, here it, it, it takes couple of cycles to initialize all the flip flops to some specific state. It has poor controllability and, and observability of the, the state variable. So, that means, here you cannot directly uh, assign any value to any of the flip flops or, or you cannot read directly. It again take couple of cycles to take out the value from a state variable to the primary output. And then, the, the, as the design is growing, the number of gates are increasing, number of flip flops are uh, increasing, hence the sequential depth of the circuit is increasing and hence you need to unroll it multiple times, uh, time frames and your, your test generation would be more and more com complex. And if you, if you lo look at the, the, the complexity of the, the test generation problem in that case, you, you will find that most of the, the time cycles are main responsible to unroll circuit multiple time frames, hence your circuit would be, be much more complex than your combination circuit and hence it would be difficult to generate test vectors. If you look at the, the, the how difficult these, these things are, like here these are the, the four different SCAS 85, 89 circuits. So, 1196 has 14 primary inputs, 14 primary output and 18 flip flops and about uh, 529 uh, gates. S uh, 1494 is almost similar kind of, of circuit which has 8 input, 8 primary input, 19 primary output and only 6 flip flop and about 600 gates. But this is cyclic circuit, this is a cyclic circuit. If you look at the, 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 the test generation, now you can achieve 100 percent fault efficiency for this uh, acyclic circuit and fault coverage is 99.8. So, that means, your remaining faults are redundant faults or identified as redundant fault and it generates 313 test vectors in 10 seconds. Whereas, this circuit has lesser number of flip flops, but this is cyclic and you need about. So, it, it generates about 559 test vectors and the, the, the test generation time is something about 20,000 seconds and still you are not able to achieve 100 percent fault efficiency. Here it is 93. So, now you can see the huge difference almost three order of magnitude difference between the, the test generation time for a, a cyclic sequential circuit and cyclic sequential circuit. This can give you the, the, the fair understanding that if your circuit is cyclic, then test generation time is, is would be huge and this is for the a circuit which has only 6 flip flop. In practice, we have millions of flip flop, you can imagine how, how much time it will take to generate a, a generate test. Then here, now the question is, if it grows like this, what is the alternate? How we can this may may not be be practical if we go for for millions of flip flip flops. Then what to do with this? And one so now now, now here look at the, the 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 problems. Problems are are due to to the poor controllability and poor observability. So that means here if we can enhance the controllability and observability of the circuit, we can make it better test testable and hence we can reduce the, 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 the test generation time. And this is coming. So, now here if you look at a, a sequential circuit, if you can look at a sequential circuit, it has a combinational logic, a couple of flip flops. 
So, now it has some primary input prime some primary outputs uh, and, and then here the in input which is coming from the flip flop is known as pseudo primary input and input which is uh, going to the flip flop is, is referred as pseudo primary outputs. Now, if I say that if I can assign any random value in these flip flop in that case my test generation complexity would be almost similar to the, the, the test generation complexity of a combinational logic. So, if, if I can, can assign any value and if I can read any value from here again here. So, now, now when you, you can write any value here, you can read any value, value from the, these flip flops at any point in time. In that case here test generation is, is as simple as test generation for combination logic. Now, so the question is how I can do that? Is there any way? So, one of the, 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 the ways that we can, can use would be say if I, I place one multiplexer here and one extra primary input. So, the, this primary input say I 1. So, now, now, now here whenever I, I want to I want to load anything here I can I can control the, the, the this multiplexer and now, now using this control I can assign any any value here. So, this gives me enhanced controllability I can control any value here in flip flop. This is so that means here I need two additional input but now here the, the controllability is, is not enough. I have to, to, to enhance the, the observability as well. Right? So, now here how I ca can, can enhance the, the, the observability. So, in order to, to, to enhance the, the observability what I, I, I need to do is I, I have to, to take the, the, the output to the primary output. So, now here I, I need to have additional primary output this is for one flip flop. Now, here for another flip flop I need to have an, an, another multiplexer and then, then one more test control. So, this is I 2 and then again I have to, to observe this uh, O 2. So, now, now here what I need is I need 3 additional primary input output per flip flop. Now, the, the, the question is means is it a practical thing. So, if you have say million flip flops, you need to have 3 million uh, additional primary input output that is impractical. So, now, now here what is the, the solution, but we want this kind of, of, of functionality that we can load any flip flop by any random value at any point in time and then we can observe any, a, a, any value which is stored in the flip flop. So, now wha wha what is the solution? One thing that we can immediately look at is that here when I am I want to load in one flip flop I can simultaneously load in this uh, another second flip flop. Hence, your test control uh, input here the we can share uh, among the flip flops. So, that, that means here sa same test con con control can be used to control all these multiplexers. Now, so now, now, now here I, I reduce this, this n number of, of, of control signal into single uh, signal, but now, now here uh, still I need at least 2 n uh, where n is the number of flip flop in the design 2 n number of, of uh, primary input outputs. How I can reduce that, that, that number to, to a reasonable number and one of the, 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 the simplest approach that we can make use is that we can connect the output of one flip flop to, uh, as, as input to the, the another flip flop in the in other way, word what I can say is that here we can chain these flip flop like this. If you chain the, the, the these oh sorry this is here from here not not from here. So, now, now here I, I, I can change this. So, that, that, that means here uh, what it, it will give me it will make a, a, a a shift register like flip flop 2 and then, then flip flop 1. So, now if I want to load say, say value uh, 1 0 
in that case here first I lo load in the first cycle I load load value 1 that would be stored in, in flip flop 2 and then in the next cycle here the, that value would be transferred here and then the another value I, I, I can load here in is, is 1. So, now I can load any arbitrary value 1 0 and so now this is a shift register. So, whatever value it has that can, can be, be scanned out. This uh, approach was first pr proposed by people from NEC in, in uh, early 60s and, and that was published only in, in, in Japanese literature. So, it was unknown to, to rest of the world until late 60s or, or, or 70s when IBM came up with the, the alternate uh, scan architecture. So, and this design is, is, is known as scan design. So, now here you I mean this gives you flexibility or, or a way to load any arbitrary value in all the, the flip flops. So, so now, now here I can, can load any arbitrary value, I can read any value from the, the these flip flops. Hence, here so but here what I, I need, I, I need at least one additional test control input that is the input that can control all these multiplexers and now, now here you, you have to, to replace all these flip flops by scan flip flop. In, uh, scan flip flop I mean a flip flop with a multiplexer and now, now here we make the, the input output as a, a scan shift register. So, now when you can arbitrarily load any value and read any value from the flip flop, now here you when you need to generate a test vector, you need to consider only combinational logic not a sequential logic. Now, the test generation problem or a, in other words the sequential test generation problem is reduced to the combinational test generation problem. So, this is the, the, the design of a scan flip flop wherein uh, we use a master slave d flip flop and a multiplexer before that. So, you, you have the, the, the test control input, scan uh, uh, data input, the, 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 this d input from the circuit and then the, this, this is your, your, your clock. So, now, now, now here you uh, as I said that we need three additional signals. Uh, one is the, the, the scan in, one is a scan out and another is the, the test control or, 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 or a, a test clock whatever we say. So, now here this signal uh, controls all the multiplexers associated with these flip flops and then this provide you, you the, the scan in and the scan out provide you the, the uh, shift path. So, now, now you can, can load any, any value and when you generate the test you need to generate test for the combination logic. So, now here how you will uh, how you apply test. First look at uh, the uh, simple combinational logic how we apply test to a combinational logic. You have a combinational logic, you apply a some in, a, a input and, uh, and then here you, you need to, to apply the, the value from the, the state variable. So, that means here pseudo primary input and then primary input and then every cycle you are getting getting output then then your output may be at the primary output or that may go to the pseudo primary output and you you are re reading that so th this way we we apply right if it, if, if it happens to be be a plain combination logic but now it is not a plain combination logic a, 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 it has memory elements or, or, or pseudo primary inputs and should means loading value to pseudo primary input inputs takes some time right because it is a shift register. So, now, now here in place of having this, this vertical S 2 S 1 now you need to, to, to make it, it horizontal. So, that, that means here in couple of cycles you, you need to scan in the, the, the test vector in the flip flops and then in one cycle you apply input from the, the primary input capture the, the, the response and then here you read the, the test response directly from the primary output of the circuit and then the, the, the response is stored in the flip flops would be shifted out while you, you, you are shifting in the ne next vector. So, now here you have to shift out the response at the, the, the same time you, you can shift in the, the ne next uh, test vector. So, this way, way you, you can apply the test. So, now, now here the question is 
how many cycles it, it, it will take. So, if again if I, I, I look at this problem say here if your scan chain length is, is n. So, you need n cycle to, to, to load test vectors then in one cycle you have to go in the functional mode uh, that, that means, you, you have to, to change your test control signal from say 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 and then, then, then you capture the test response and you, you scan out the test response this is for the first vector. For the second vector you have to again is load the, the test vector go to the functional mode apply primary input and capture the test response and then the captured test response from the free flops you have to scan out it the, 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 this way you keep on doing. Now, because this is shift register in that case here you can can do the, this operation in parallel. So, when you are scanning out the test response you have to scan in the in the the, the test vector for the next next uh, test vector. Okay. So, now here if, if there are there, there are k vectors you want to scan in a scan in a scan out in that case here uh, how many cycles it will take it will take the means for all vectors it will take n plus 1 cycle. So, n plus 1 cycle multiplied by k and then here after application of the last vector you have to, to scan out the response of the last vector. So, the, the, this would be n right. So, now, now, now here the, your, your test total test time you, you need is, is k plus 1 into n where n is the number of number of flip flops and uh, uh, and k is the, the, the number of test vectors. So, now, now here if you look in this expression in that case here this is n combinational logic. So, that means, the number of test vectors plus 1 into number of flip flops plus uh, and the number of test vectors the, this many cycles it, it will take. So, it will elongate the test time the, the elongation of test time directly result into increase in the test cost, but it greatly reduce the, the, the test generation effort. And that is why though the, the this scan design was proposed in way back in 60s till date it is surviving. So, almost all the industries are using the, the full scan design wherein all the flip flops are converted into, into scan flip flop and then you apply uh, test by by loading the, the test pattern in, in sequential fashion. So, now, now here the other thing that we, we have to, to take into account this way if you generate test for the combinational logic you can you can detect all the faults in the co combinational logic, but what if, if the, the flip flop itself is a faulty circuit. So, if it is uh, itself is a faulty circuit you have to, to test that as well. Now, since uh, flip flop is a memory element, it does a limited function. Hence, in place of having fault model like a stuck at kind of fault model, we can use the functional fault model for this. And functional fault model is like it should either restore 0 or, or restore 1. So, that means, here we have to check whether it is stores 0 or, or, or restores 1. Uh, or whether it provide you transition from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So, if I, I, I scan a, 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 a sequence of 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 all through all the, the, the flip flops in that case here I, uh, I can say that here means if I get, if I get out the same sequence from the, the scan chain I, I can say that it stores 0 it stores 1 and it also allows transition from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. Otherwise, if if assume one flip flop is, is uh, cannot store one that stores permanently zero. In that case, after a while, all the bit will be be one because here uh, the the entire bit stream is going through that particular flip flop, and after a while, you will get all bit as a uh, zero. So that means here the that scan chain itself is is faulty. So in order to make sure, you have to scan through a bit stream of zero zero one one, and it will take. Uh, the the number of flip flop plus four number of cycles. So first you 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 have to scan through a bit se a, a sequence of zero zero one one. That's uh, also known as a, the sanity check of scan chain. Once it is done, you can apply your your test vector. So now here the number of scan chain plus four number of test vector you are applying from here 
and then as we discussed earlier that in order to apply the test vector you need these many cycles. So, now here the total number of cycles it needs is the, the total number of test vectors plus 2 into multiplied by the number of flip flops plus test vector plus 4. So, uh, these are the, the to total number, number of clock periods you need. So, like here for example, if you have a, a scan chain of 2000 flip flop and, and you are want to apply 500 combinational vectors, if it happens to be only combinational logic you need five, 500 cycles. If it is a sequential circuit and, and, and uh, you generate test using the sequential logic and assume that say every vector may need a sequence of 4, every fault may need a sequence of 4 vectors, maybe you may, may need 500, 2000 vectors and then it may, may need uh, 2000 cycles. Whereas, if it is a scan design in that case you can put this value 2000 and 500 in this formula you will get roughly about a million cycles. So, you can see the, the, the impact in terms of test time. So, this will increase the, the, the test time, but it helps you greatly in reducing the test generation effort. Otherwise, test generation may not be possible for a fairly large industrial design or if it is possible it may take enormously long time that may not be affordable. Now, the, 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 the question is, so if you look at the, 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 the various uh, overheads, then, uh, then it, it comes with following over overheads like you need a multiplexer with every, uh, every flip flop. So, that result into additional area. You need to have a test control signal routed all through the, the, the chip. So, that uh, routing area overhead is also there. Then, because you are you are placing a multiplexer in the, the functional path, hence it will result into additional delay, hence your, your circuit may operate slow. So, uh, it has performance penalty then it should have three additional pins one is a scan in scan out and a test control and fourth is uh, and now here uh, because of the, the the sequential loading of uh, is scan pattern it takes longer time now I, I, as i said that that here for for a small circuit which has about 2000 flip flop and 500 uh, test vectors it take about a million cycle now, what are the ways to reduce the, the, the this time because this directly result into into uh, additional test cost. So, one of the way that we can think of is you have very long scan chain I can break that scan chain in multiple scan chains. So, like here say these 2000 uh, flip flop in one scan chain I can chop off in say 10 scan chains and every scan chain will have now 200 flip flop and I, I, I can load uh, the, these 10 scan chains in, in parallel. So, but for that I need 10 additional primary inputs and 10 uh, additional primary outputs. So, that means here in all I may need 21 uh, additional input output pins that uh, we may not have. So, what uh, then what is the solution? One of the solution could be because when we are loading the scan pattern in the, the scan chain, we are not using primary input and primary output. So, what we can do is we can you multiplex the these uh, scan input and primary in, in, in input uh, and, and we can reduce the, the this requirement. So, that means here by multiplexing we really need one additional pin and that is your test control that can, can control all these multiplexers associ associated with the flip flops. So, now, now here uh, whenever you are in the, the test mode it, it would not take input from the combinational logic or from the primary input and when it is in, in the functional mode it, it would not uh, shift the, the value from one flip flop to, to another flip flop. So, so now, now here that can solve our, our, our problem up to certain extent we can reduce. Then here the question is how many uh, scan chain I can afford to and, and, and the, the answer of that is max of 
if, uh, number of inputs and number of outputs, b, b, because here for every scan chain I need to have one input and one output. Uh, output. So, say your circuit may have 10 input and, and 8 output in that case here maximum I can have 8 parallel scan chains. So, that and, and that uh, directly reduces test time by uh, 8 times. Okay. So, if you look at the effort in that case here say you have circuit which has a num number of gates uh, about 3000 and number of, of, of flip flop about 179 and so if you use the, the, the sequential uh, test generation in that case you may achieve something li like 5 70 percent fault efficiency in about 5500 uh, seconds. Whereas, if you convert all flip flop into a scan flip flop in that case here uh, you, you need to generate test for, for combinational logic and it will take it can achieve 100 percent fault efficiency in 5, five seconds. But now, if you look at the test application, here if you generate this test vector by using the, the sequential ATPG in that case you may generate say 414 uh, test vectors and in order to apply this you need 414 cycles only. Whereas, here you, you generate 585 test vectors and in order to apply that you, you need about 1 lakh cycles. And so, so now, now you can see the, the, the overhead in terms of time and, and this is recurring cost, but as I mentioned you earlier that this can greatly help you the test generation. Here again we cannot directly compare the, the this time, the, this is almost 3 order of magnitude higher than, than this time. But if you look at the fault efficiency here, we achieved 100 percent efficiency here, the fault efficiency is 70 percent only. If you go to, to 100 percent in that case here, this time will exponentially grow and then the, this may, may go unre, uh, unreasonably large number or, or, or impractical. So, now in general the, the skin design flow is more or less automated today. So, when you, you, you start your design fro, from RTL, you, you synthesize your circuit to gate level netlist. Once you have gate level netlist in that case here, there are two things you have to do. One thing is because you have gate level netlist, you have combinational logic in this, you, you start to generate the, the test vector from the combinational, combinational logic. At the same time here you ca can in, in insert the, the scan chain. So, in insert scan chain mean here you have to convert all flip flop into scan flip flop and then, the, then you have to stitch this scan flip flop in a shift register. So, now, now, now here once you have shift register in that case here you know the, the, the layout of the, the chip and you, you know that how these flip flops are con connected. Based on that here you have to, to generate the, the test se sequence. So, the, the, the test sequence is generated and now here the, the, the mask and the, the test program you have to, to send to, to the, the fab wherein they, they, they apply that. So, now when you, you, you have the gate level net list, it has to, to, to follow certain rule in order to, to ins insert the scan cell in the, the circuit. So, what are the those rules when which the, this need to follow? So, certain some of the rules are like here we have to use only clocked D type flip flop. We are discouraged to use any other type of the flip flop like SR flip flop, JK flip flop, T flip flop. So, now practically all the circuits are, are, are built or designed using, using clocked D type flip flop. At least you should have one primary input pin available for the test that is the, the test control pin which used to uh, which is used to control the multiplexers associated with these D flip flops. And third thing is the, that all clock must be controlled from the primary input. So, that means here the clock should not be gated, clock should, should come from or, or are controlled by primary inputs only and clock must not feed data input to the, the, the flip flops. So, these are, 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 are some of the design rules you have to 
follow if you if you want to insert scan. So, that means here once it is followed you can directly can replace the, the, the flip flop by any other uh, by scan flip flop that means here flip, flip flop uh, with a multiplexer. So, like here for example, if this is the, the circuit wherein you have one flip flop and then, then the clock is gated. So, uh, and and sometimes it is very easy to, to design the, the, this kind of gated clock circuit. So, now, now here clock will depend on, on, on the clock and the, the D input. So, the, that means here whenever D input is high and clock is high, it, it allows the, the value to change in this flip flop. Now, when you when I, I, I do not want the, this or uh, we do not allow gated clock, what we, we need to do? We have to convert this gated clock input into non gated clock input. So, now, now here the same same functionality we can achieve by, by this circuit. So, you have to, to convert if your, your circuit is, is designed by like this you have to, to transform your, your circuit into, into or, or, or optim, uh, convert your circuit into this design, wherein the, the, the clock is clean that is controlled by primary input that is not controlled by, by, the, by the data input. Sometimes uh, though here this is means it is discouraged to, to use the gated clock, but some, sometimes in order to, to, to optimize your, your, your circuit you, you, you feel it, it is better to, to, to do the, the clock getting rather than, than doing any, uh, any other optimizing using any uh, other way. So, one must be careful means while you, you are designing if you want to go for, for this scan design. Now, here as, as I said that, that scan design comes with, with some of the, the overhead those are like here a uh, additional uh, area, additional, uh, uh, additional uh, performance penalty, then additional pins, but it reduces test generation time and test generation effort significantly. So, this, is, this was wonderful technique which was, um, which was ever proposed in, in VLSI test and that is why it is surviving for last 5 decades. So, but there is a famous quote by George Bernard Shaw which says that science is always wrong, it never solves a problem without creating 10 more and scan design is, is, is no, not an exception to this this solves a very important problem of, of sequential test generation, but it creates some additional problems and then we, we have to solve the, the, those problems. In some sense it is it gives you some additional problems to, to, to solve. So, now, now here what are the, the those uh, additional problems we may have. So, one of the, the, the problem that, that I mentioned you earlier is that here your test application time will significantly increase and it will directly translate to the, the, the test cost. Another problem is test data volume. What does the, the, this mean? Like here if you apply sequential test in that case here you need to, to store only a few vectors and then then you have to apply those from the primary input and number of primary inputs are, are, are pretty small. So, say you, you, you have 10 inputs and, and, and every I mean say there, there, there are 100 a test vector you want to apply. So, in that case here you may need to store only 100 bits. Now, assume that you have 10 inputs and you have 1000 scan, uh, scan sets and you may want to apply 100 inputs. So, now here how many bits you want to, to, to store? You may need to, to or you must store 1000 plus 10 input per vector. So, that means here it, it is the, the number of bits that you may need to, to store would be 100, 100 multiplied by 1000 plus 10. Uh, and so, so you may need to, to store now here almost 1000 times additional test vectors th that needs the, 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 the memory on, on the, the tester. In the same way you also need the golden re response 
from the primary output as well as the, the values in the flip flops. So, now here your, your test data as well as golden ref, uh, response will also in, increase several order of magnitude and assume you have a, a circuit with millions of flip flops and millions of, uh, of several millions of, of a test vector you need enormous huge memory. So, so that, that, that means, the, the storage of that test data is also a problem. So, that is that is additional, additional problem that we have. The very important problem nowadays is the, the, the test power which was not there earlier. Though here the, the test data volume was also not very big problem in initially because at the time the, the circuit complexity was, was not that much or, or the circuit was too small. Now here the, the, the what is the, the source of test power? So, say you, you may need to uh, easily you, you may generate a test vector wherein you may need to load a, 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 a test data like here 101010 sequence because this, this sequence you are generating from the combinational logic. Now, when you load this sequence in, in flip flops, what will happen because they, they, there, are, there are different adjacent bits. So, in every cycle when these bits will shift every flip flop will toggle and that so, so that, that means here large number of, of, of switching will happen in the, 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 the flip flops and this switching will also reflect in the, the combinational logic. The, and see this happens only in the test mode because here in functional mode you may not may not need to shift the, this te test vector, but because here in the, the test mode I want to load the, the these bits in, in the, the sequence L shift fashion here I, I it it creates switching uh, in all flip flops in all the, the, the cycles and that switching reflect also reflects to the combinational logic combinational logic will also switch and now now here the, the total power that, that that would be dissipated during this period may go very high and practical observation says that in some of the cases peak the average power can go 3 to 4 times than the, the normal power and peak power may go 30 times than the, the, the normal power. What are the implications of this? If test um, if average power exceeds beyond a limit then your, your chip may burn out. So, that means, here you may damage a good chip and, and, so, and, and that will result into yield loss because of your, your, your bad test methodology. If peak power exceeds beyond cert certain limit, your circuit will start to draw large current all of sudden from your power grid. Power grid may not support that and hence there would be a drop in, in VDD. If there is a drop in VDD, then transistors start to switch slower. Hence, your, your, your response may not be able to, to propagate or the, the, the effect of application of one test vector may not be able to propagate to the, the output within the given uh, clock period. And hence, here the, you may classify your, your good chip as bad chip because you, you will receive a random uh, response out and uh, so again here it will lead to the yield loss. So, these are the, the, the important problems that those appeared in or, or post uh, 2000. So, now, now, now here the, the, there must be some solutions to these problems if you want to continue with the, the serial scan. These, th these problems appear due, due, due to se serial uh, scan shift uh, nature of the, the, the test vector. So, now, now here what are the, the, the solutions? I may describe a couple of solutions in brief. You can look at literature, there is a large body of, of, of literature available targeting these uh, problems. So, 
like here the, 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 the some of the, the efforts which are, are, are being made. Like one of the, the, the effort is while you are generating the, the, the test, you have to you, you can generate a test because as, as we discussed earlier that one fault may have multiple tests. So, you can select a test which can dissipate less power and when you are generating test, it generates large number of access. So, that means, here the, the, the propagation of fault effect uh, is not impacted by those primary inputs. So, now here you primary inputs or pseudo primary inputs. So, now you can fill these access by any value and typically people use three approaches. One is all access are filled by zeros or all access are filled by ones or all access are access are filled by looking at the adjacent specified bit. If it is 0 in that case it should be filled by 0, if it is 1 in that case it should be filled by 1 that is known as minimum transition. So, you want to reduce the, the, the transition. So, there are couple of approaches. So, now here if you if you want to select a test vector that can consume or, or dissipate lesser power in that the that means it has to create lesser trans, a, a transitions or, or, or activity in the circuit. If it creates lesser activity in that case here that may not able to detect multiple faults. Hence, you may need large number of more number of test vectors. Hence, this can solve the, your problem of test power, test power can be reduced, but here test length will increase. Other thing possibility is you when you are scanning in you can reduce the test clock. So, that means, here you can, can operate your circuit slower hence you can reduce the average power. In practice scan shift operation happens almost 5 times slower than the, the, the rated uh, clock frequency. So, now here you, you can reduce the, the, the test power. But now, when you, you reduce the clock frequency in that case your test application time will increase hence your test cost will increase. The other way is like here you can, can reorder the, the, the scan chain and reordering mean here say if you want to scan in the pattern 1 0 1 0 1 0 and so now, now here you have to have you have 1 in flip flop 1. 0 in flip flop 2, 1 in flip flop 3, 0 in flip flop 4, 1, 1 in 5, 0 in 6. If I can, can stitch this can chain in different way like here 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6 in that case here how I need to scan a uh, scan in I need to scan in 11000 0, 0, 0 and, and hence I can reduce the number of transitions because now in every cycle there would be only one transition here. So, this can, can reduce the, the, the test power and, uh, and, and test time, but here now you need to modify the, the, the scan is teaching and the, the, that is needs some design, design effort and hence design time will increase. Then uh, in order to reduce the, the, the test time or, or, or test data size, here you can do the compression at the primary input and, and, and at the primary output compaction or compression is the, the widely used technique, but here it again it has a lim limited capability. So, these are, are, are some of the, the effort which were proposed by, by people to take care of, of the, the additional problems which are coming from the, the, the serial scan design. There is an alternate approach that we can get away from the, the serial scan and then now in, in place of serial scan we can have random access scan like we have random access memory. So, that means we can, can load or unload any flip, flip flop whenever we want we do not need to, to serial shift every, everything that can, can al that can also help you in, in uh, targeting all these three additional problems. You can look at various papers published on um, for, for random random access scan. Okay, so, here I, I complete the scan design portion. Uh, I discussed about why we need uh, need scan design and what are the, the 
the advantages of scan design and what are the overheads it comes with, what benefit it gives you and what are the, the additional problems we are getting due to serial scan in, in current designs and what are the various solutions we have. So, in nutshell I can say that, that, that here if we have serial design uh, serial scan design, we, we can convert every flip flop into a scan flip flop and then we can go to ATPG generate test using a combination of ATPC and then we can, can apply, apply the, the test. But you need a an expensive tester to apply these, these test vectors and you can test these chips just after manufacturing or in, in the, the so at the, the, the fab house or uh, uh, in the, the, the design house if you have uh, expensive tester. Some of the devices are very safety critical devices and you would like to monitor the health of those devices while they are operating in the field as well. So, that cannot be done if you are testing by the, a chip using external very expensive test equipment. If it happens to be, be, be a small equipment or, or very inexpensive equipment, you can still test it. So, now if you want to, to build capability of, of field test, you have to think about some other alternate that is one of the, the problems. Second, as I said that, that here it has some cost implication in terms of uh, like you, you put when you put your, your chip on tester it cost you somewhere 5 to 10 cents per, per second. So, it, 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 it is expensive. Then it was thought that can we build a test capability in chip itself. So, that means, is it possible that chip can test itself that can help you in testing your, your, your chip at a speed. So, that means, here you do not need to slow shift your, your, your test vector apply the test in the, in the functional mode and scan out the response. That can also give you the, the, the flexibility uh, to diagnose your chip and so that technique is known as built in self test. It may not sound well if you say that chip tests itself. So, that means here I need to have all these kind of test resources on, on chip that means here you have to have a test generator on the chip, you have to have a test response collector on the chip, you have to have some mechanism that can, can check with the, the, the golden re, re, reference, the collected reference and uh, uh, collected res, response and then make a decision whether chip is, is good or bad. But as, as I said that, that, that here a uh, field test is, is important for some of the devices like here nowadays when you power on your, your laptop, it generally do some kind of self, self test for the memory for the sometimes for the, the, the processor as well. So, and, and, and so in order to monitor the, the, the health of your, your system whether it is, it is, it is good. Generally for the, the diagnosis here we, we use as, uh, uh, the software test, but if you use the software test in that case, case here the, the hardware um, fault coverage is pretty low that may be something like here 20 30 percent after application of large number of, of, of uh, hardware test vector like here you boot the operating system or, or you, you run some application on that. Diagnostic resolution is also very low it, it, it is very slow process. So, that means here if you use the, the, the hardware built in self test in that case here you may have lower system test effort you can use the, the, the same built in self test after manufacturing and then and then in the, the field. It can, can improve the, the system maintenance and, and repair, it can, can uh, re improve the, the component rep repair and then it gives you the better diagnosability. 
it also alleviate, alleviate some of the, the problem uh, test problems which are, are coming from the expensive uh, tester. So, the some of the problems are like here in, in today, today's design the, the logic to pin ratio is, is very large. So, that means here we you have large logic and then there are only only few pins. So, so the pins are not, not increasing as per Moore's law and, and but here logic is doubling almost every 18 months. So, so now, now here it is very hard to, to observe some internal points. So, observability is, is, is very very uh, difficult. Then it, it the, the density of de device is, is increasing and then here clock is becoming, becoming faster and the, the test application time because the, the number of flip flops are increasing then test application time is increasing, the number of test vectors are increasing and like here Moore's law the test vectors are increasing every means doubling almost for uh, every 13 to 16 months and you, you need uh, expensive test vector and then here the, the it is very hard to uh, insert some test points in the, the, the circuit because here uh, the, the this may impact the timing of the, the circuit. Of course, here in industry faces the shortest of test engineer. So, the, the, that is why also we need built in self test kind of, of, of a test mechanism. Other thing is like here uh, for the design point of view it is easy to partition the circuit and, and, and do design in parallel, but here it is it's very very or extremely difficult to partition the circuit for the, the test point of view. So, these are some of the problems which are being uh, which are elevated by a built in self test. So, now here built in self test uh, means your chip is supposed to test itself. So, that means here you need to have a hardware pattern generator, you need to have a response analyzer or, or compactor that can compact collect the response compare with the golden ref response and say go no go. And then here in order to control all these activities here you must have a test controller that can control that means here that can can uh, excite the, the, the te test pattern and uh, generator and analyzer at different point in time and, and then, then here you need to have some methodology to test that built in self test uh, hardware. It also comes with, with some pin overhead. So, that means here at least you must have one additional pin that can, can say you that here now it is, it is the, the time for built in self test. So, now you, you have to run the test. So, you need additional additional pin for that because here we are inserting additional hardware for the, the test pattern generator and, and analyzer and then a test controller in that case here some of the ad, uh, additional gates may be being in, in inserted in the some critical path and, and, and due to that here performance may reduce. Because we are adi, uh, putting additional infrastructure in the, the circuit then the area will increase if area increases in that ca, ca, case here the number of faults may likely to increase hence the, the, the yield may be low. And then, because of the the, the, the uh, additional area, the reliability of the, the the system also also reduces. So now and and then here the the, the built-in self-test hardware complexity will also increase when you you want to make that that that, that a uh, additional circuit as a testable. So now here the if if you look at the what kind kind of faults your your built-in self-test can can detect, these are like here all single uh, faults in the, the, the single stacked fault uh, in, in the combinational or sequential circuit, all the delay faults, single stacked fault in the, the built in self test hardware or, or architecture. What are the, the, the benefits of this? It reduces the, the, the maintenance cost, it generates the, the test at lower cost, it reduces the, the, the storage or maintenance of, of test vectors. It is simpler and, and, and less, less expensive automatic test equipment is needed because here you need to say only that, that here now you start the, the test and now you stop the test that that is it. It can test um, as many units in as uh, possible in, in parallel because now you need a very small board that can tell it tell a chip that now you should start to test test the, the, the chip and these are, are very in, uh, inexpensive boards. So, you can test large number of, of chips in, in, in parallel and so now, now here the, the, the test application time would be would be, be, be shorter and uh, now, now here you, you 
you can apply test at, at the, the, the circuit speeds in that case here at speed test is, is enabled. So, if you look at the, the, the test arc built in self test architecture what you need you need a hardware pattern generator you need a hardware pet, a response analyzer you need to, to have some place where you, you, you store or a, the golden re reference input and then you have to compare the, the need to have a comparator that can compare your collected response with the, the, the golden ref response and it will say that chip is go good or, or chip is bad. Now, here uh, and this is your, your, your circuit under test. So, now, now where you, you need to apply the, the test you need to apply the test at the primary input right. So, that means, here you have to, to multiplex the, the output of hardware pattern generator with the primary inputs and you have to, to take output from the primary output of the, the circuit and in order to do all these things you need to have a test controller that can, can generate the, the control signal for all the, all the, the, the test pattern. So, now here this approach can, can test all these all the faults which are in the uh, circuit under test all the faults which are, are, are in the, the, the built in self test uh, structure except uh, the faults which are which are present at the, the, the primary input of this multi, multiplexer because here when you are testing your chip you are not exercising this path and primary output. So, now, now here if there is a open in that case here you may not be able to, to, to exercise that and you may not be able to test. So, these are the, 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 the faults which may remain uncovered if you use built in self test. So, now describing this built in self test I stop here today uh, we will continue with the, the various components of built in self test in the next lecture. Thank you very much for patience for listening. Good day.